So this video is about the implementation of the 2017 periodontal disease classification. It's been around for a couple of years now, but not everybody is entirely confident in using it in day-to-day -day practice. So hopefully this will make it more simple and straightforward for you and easy to follow. The first thing we need to do is a BPE screening where you can get a score from zero to four and then a star to indicate a furcation involvement. If the patient has a score zero to two and there's no evidence of incidental recession, then the patient can be categorized into th one of three different groups for gingivitis. If less than 10% of sites have bleeding on probing, then this is considered to be gingival health. If more than 10% of sites have gingival bleeding, but less than 30%, this is localized to gingivitis. And if more than 30% of sites have bleeding, this is considered to be generalized gingivitis. If there's a BPE code of two, then you should also make a record of what plaque retentive factors are present. So for example, you see a patient, they have a BPE score of two due to a crown, which is collecting a lot of plaque. There's a bit of inflammation there. And when you do bleeding on probing or marginal bleeding, you get a score of 40% bleeding, then this would be generalized gingivitis as your diagnosis. And you would also make a record that the crown on the upper left one, for example, is plaque retentive. If the patient has a BPE code of three or four, then you should be taking appropriate radiographs. In most cases, a periapical will be required to fully visualize the bone levels around the teeth. Provided there's no obvious evidence of incidental recession for a BPE code three, you can perform initial therapy and then reassess in three months time. In three months time, you need to take a six point pocket chart in all of the affected sextants to reassess these and check whether they've responded to treatment. In many cases, improved oral hygiene plus initial therapy will be sufficient to reduce those scores down to BPE of zero to two, in which case this can be diagnosed as a gingivitis case. If the patient has a BPE code of four, then you need to be doing a full mouth six point pocket chart in order to give you a baseline and something to measure against, and also to help you assess the severity of the disease. The patient needs to be then assigned to one of three different categories, depending on the pattern of the bone loss and the pattern of the pocketing. So if the patient has got a molar incisor presentation, this would be molar incisor periodontitis. Now, if the patient has less than 30% of sites affected, then it will be localized periodontitis. And if there's 30% or greater sites affected, it will be generalized periodontitis. Once we've identified which of these three categories the patient falls into, we need to move on to the staging of the disease. Now, there are five different things we need to ascertain. Number one is whether it's gingivitis or periodontitis. Number two is whether it's molar incisor presentation localized or generalized. Then we need to do the staging, then the grading, and then we need to do whether it's how stable the disease is. We add a comment at the end, which you could consider to be a sixth point on whether the disease has any other risk factors associated with it. So, but we'll come back to that. In order to get the staging of the disease and the grading, which we'll come on to, you need to get appropriate radiographs in order to show you the bone levels around the teeth. So in most cases, periapicals will be required for this. So when you're staging the disease, you need to be looking for the worst affected site. So the area with the most bone loss due to periodontitis. There are, there are four different stages of the disease, stage one to four. One would be considered to be early and mild, with four being very severe. Stage one is less than 15% interproximal bone loss or less than two millimeters. Stage two, the bone loss remains in the coronal third of the tooth. Stage three, it would be in the mid third of the tooth and stage four in the apical third of the tooth. So if you've got 80% bone loss, then this is going to be a stage four. Now, the way I consider it is to look at the 100% divided by three, which gives me my coronal third, mid third, and apical third. So up to 33% horizontal bone loss or vertical bone loss would be considered to be stage two. If it's in the 30 to 60%, then it would be stage three. And if it was 30, 60 to 100%, it would be stage four. Next thing we want to come on to is the grading. So the grading is the percentage bone loss in the worst affected site divided by the patient's age. The grading aims to give you an idea of the rate of progression from mild to moderate to rapid progression of the disease. And now because we no longer have aggressive periodontitis as a diagnosis, you would consider more that stage four grade C would be something you'd be considering to be a rapid progression or the equivalent of aggressive periodontitis using the old classification. So the fifth thing which we need to consider is the status of the disease. So whether it's stable or unstable or whether the patient's in remission. For periodontal disease to be considered to be stable, there need to be no sites greater than four millimeters, no bleeding on probing at the sites that are four millimeters, and less than 10% of sites bleeding on probing overall. If a case is in remission, there are no sites greater than four millimeters, and the four millimeter pockets are not bleeding on probing. However, in general, there is more than 10% bleeding on probing. So this is basically a bit like gingivitis 
superimposed on early periodontitis. Cases that are unstable are for anyone who have probing pocket depths greater than five millimeters or any pockets which are four millimeters and still bleeding. Finally, the other thing which we need to consider are any risk factors. So this is kind of the sixth point or an additional note which you might make. So it's whether the periodontitis is influenced by any outside factors. Now for the new classification, the two things which we're expected to consider are whether the patient smokes or not and whether the patient has diabetes which is controlled or not. So an example of a diagnosis would be generalized stage three, grade B, unstable periodontitis with a risk factor of smoking 15 cigarettes per day. So I hope you found this useful. If you've got any questions, please feel free to get in touch with me and maybe from breaking it down into a step-by-step -step approach, this has made it a bit easier to understand. The British Society of Periodontology have some great guidelines. If you just search BSP flowchart, that will give you a flowchart on how to follow this through day-to-day -day in practice. And it also gives you advice on treatment for each of these different diagnoses.